Alright then my friends, so now we know a lot of the basics of React and you're becoming budding React ninjas, I think it's time that we can bundle everything together that we've learned so far and create a little application, just a simple one, a to-do app based on everything we've learned. Now this is going to span two videos, in this video we're going to set this application up using Create React App and we'll also create a couple of components just to list some to-dos and in the next video, what we'll do is hook up all the events so that we can add to do's and delete to do's as well. All right. So you'll notice so far I've deleted our previous project that we were working on and I'm inside this folder, React Redux Complete. So what I'm going to do now is use npx and then create React App. And I'm going to call this to do app like so. Press enter and this is going to create this application for us. All right then, so now we've got that installed, we can cd into that directory to do app and we can start the server by saying npm start, just so we can keep that running in the background. And now we should be able to see it in a browser. All right, there we go. So the first thing I want to do is head on over to Materialize CSS, which is a CSS library and this is based on material design. Now, I want to load this into our project just so we don't have to focus too much on writing our own CSS and instead we can just use some materialized classes to style up our project and that way we can focus solely on React. So I'll leave this link right down below, but if we scroll right down here, we can see this CDN link. This is what we want. I just want the CSS, not bothered about the JavaScript. And we're going to go and paste this inside our index.html file. So if we scroll down here, just above the title, we'll paste that in. All right, so now we have that loaded, we can use some different materialized classes inside our templates. So that's going to make things look nice in the browser rather than us spend a long time styling this stuff up. All right, so let's get rid of that. Now let's go into the source folder and start this bad boy. So first of all, app.css, I'm going to delete that. We don't really need it. I'm also going to delete the test file and I'll delete the logo and then we'll head on into the root component app.js. We'll delete these two references to the logo and the CSS, which we just deleted over here on the left. And we'll also get rid of all this junk right here. So this here is our root component. And our root component is going to be a container component and it's going to be where we store the state of our application. We're going to store the to do's inside the state of this component. So let's create those first of all, just some simple dummy data. We'll set this equal to an object and inside we'll have a to do's property. Now this is an array and we'll just add two items to begin with. Each one is going to have an ID and we'll set that to one and the content is going to be buy some milk all right and then the next object will have an id of two and the content for this will be play mario kart always a good idea okay so now we have our state stored in this root component all right so let's work a little bit on the template and where we're going to output these different items right here well first of all let's go down into this Div right here. This is where we ultimately want to render our to do's, but I don't want to do it directly inside this component. I'd like to have a separate component which is just responsible for listing individual to do's. So let's first of all go over to the source and create a new file and we'll call this to do's.js. All right, so this component right here, this is just going to be a functional component because we don't need state inside this one. We registered the state over here and we'll pass those down into this component. So all we need to do here is import React from React, like so. And then down below, we can just say const to do's. That's the name of this component and set that equal to a function. And inside this function, what do we want to do? Well, first of all, we want to return some kind of template, right? So inside this template, I would like to return a div first of all. This will have a class name of to do's and also a class name of collection. That there is a materialized CSS class and that's just going to style things up nicely for us. And then here is where we're going to output those to do's. Now we need to pass those to do's from this component into this component and we'll do that via props. So let's first of all import the to do's component right here into this file so we can nest it. We'll say import to do's from and it's dot forward slash to say the current directory and it's just to do's like that all right so now we can nest that inside this component 
So down here, first of all, we'll do an H1 and we'll say this is going to have a class of center. Again, materialized class to center it on the page and another one, blue text to make it blue. All right, so we'll do a title called to do's and then under that we'll nest the other component. So to do's like so, that's all we need to do, but we want to pass it some props and they will have a name of to do's. We'll set that equal to something in curly braces because this is going to be dynamic. And what we're going to pass in is this property. So we can reference this for the component dot state dot to do's. And that is going to pass that array down into this component. All right. So we can save that now and we can then access those to do's inside this component. So first of all, we need to accept the props there. I'm going to use destructuring, so an object to represent the props, and then we're grabbing the to-dos off that props object. So now we can use those down here. Okay, so because we're getting a list here, we need to map through that list and return some JSX for each individual item in that list and then output that list. So we'll do that above the return statement right here because I like to do it outside of the return statement. Keep everything separate. So I'll say const and we'll call this to do list and set that equal to to do's, which we now receive as a prop here and then dot length. And what we're doing is checking here to see if these have a length. If we don't have any to do's, then we don't want to show any or we want to show a different message. If we do have some to do's, then we want to show the actual to do list. So this is going to be a ternary operator to check whether this is true or false. It's false if it's zero, true if we have some to do's. All right then, so we need the question mark in the ternary operator. Then we need our first return statement if this thing right here is true. So that is the JSX we return if we have to-dos, then a colon, and then we return something if we don't have any to-dos. Now, you could just return null here and it will output nothing to the screen, but instead I'd like to return some JSX here, which is going to be a P tag. And inside that P tag, we'll just say you have no to-dos left yay all right and we'll give this a class name as well right here and set that equal to center all right so this is going to be the thing that gets output if we have no to do's right if this thing right here is false so this stuff right here inside these brackets is the stuff we want to output if we do have to do's so we need to cycle through those. So let's grab them and use the map method, much like we have done in previous tutorials. And inside, we grab each to-do separately as we cycle through them and fire a function on that to-do. Now, we need to return some JSX for each one of those. So inside parentheses, we'll say we'll have a div. First of all, this will have a class of collection hyphen item, because remember, this is going to sit inside the collection right here. So again, this is another materialized CSS class to just style this a little bit better. All right, so let's press shift. And then inside here, we want to output the actual to do. Now I'll do this in a span tag. And the content of this is going to be to do dot content like so. All right, because remember, we have a property called content on each one of these. Now we also need to output the ID as a key. So we'll go here and say key is equal to to do dot ID. Remember, React expects a unique key on every surrounding element that we return inside this map function right here when we output them to the browser so that it can identify each individual item and perform those DOM manipulations easy if it needs to. All right. So we've done that now. What we need to do is output these to-dos. So let's go down here and say we want to output the to-do list, which remember is this thing. This is what we're storing all the list of JSX in. So let's save that now and view it in a browser and see what's going on. So let's go to our React app and we're getting an error right here, export default. And that's because we've not exported the component down here stupidly. So let's export default. And then we want to export the to-dos, which is the name of the component right here. So save that, view it in a browser. All right, so now we're getting these to-dos right here. They're being listed in the browser. Now it's looking a bit wide at the minute. So let's just add a simple class around this in the app container component right here. And we'll give this a class right here of container. And instead of just app, we'll call this to-do hyphen app. All right then, so let's save that and view this again. And this is looking a bit better now. 
All right then, so I'd like to do one more thing in this tutorial, and that is just hook up a simple event to delete these to do. So when we click on one of these, it deletes it from the list. So let's go first of all to our app.js. This is where the function to delete something has to be because it has to interact with the state right here. So let's create that function and I'm going to call this delete to do. Okay, let's set that equal to a function. This function is going to take an ID as a parameter and that's how we're going to look up and filter something from this array. And inside here, what we'll do is just console.log the ID for now. Now we want to pass this function right here as a prop down to the to-dos component so that we can call it from the to-dos component when we click on an individual to-do. So to do that, let's just pass it down as a prop called delete to do and set it equal to the function this dot delete to do. All right, so now we have access to that over here. We need to pass it in here so that we can grab it from the props object first of all. So delete to do like that and then we can use it. All right, so now I need to attach a click event to this span to the individual item when it's output so that when someone clicks on it, it deletes it, it fires this function. So we'll give this an on click handler right here and set that equal to something. And this something is gonna be delete to do, but then we have to pass through the ID. Now remember, this is gonna automatically invoke the function because we have parenthesis right here. Parenthesis invokes the function. So what we have to do is wrap this in an anonymous function first of all, which will be an arrow function. So brackets, arrow, curly braces, and then curly braces. All right, so now when we click on this, it's gonna fire this thing right here. Now we don't just pass ID, it's gonna to be to do dot ID since the ID is stored on the to do which we're cycling through at that moment in time. So now when we click on it, it's gonna fire this function over here and it's gonna log that ID to the console. So let's save this and see if this works. I'll open up the console and click on one of these. Now when we click on it, we get the ID of that thing right there. Well, that's not enough. We want to delete it from the list. So then let's go back to our app.js file and this is where we have to pad out this function. So we want to filter this thing right here. Remember, the filter method is non-destructive. It returns a new array so we can do it directly on this property. We'll store that new array in a new constant called todos and we'll set that equal to this dot state dot todos dot filter. And inside this filter method, we'll pass back a function which takes the individual to do inside that function as a parameter so we can fire something on each to do. And we want to return either true or false here. True if we want to keep that item in the array, false if we want to remove it. So we say to do dot ID is not equal to ID. So we're saying here, if this to do ID right here that we get is not equal to this one, then we're going to return true because if they're not equal, then obviously we don't want to filter it out. If they are equal, then this is going to return false and it's going to remove that from the array and that new array is stored right there. So now what we want to do is set the state and set the to do's to be equal to this new array right here. So we'll say this dot set state and inside here, pass the object and the to do's is going to be equal to the to do's which we just created right there. Now, since the key and the value both have the same name here, bit of ES6 shortening, you can just do that. All right. So that's just a shorter way of doing it. If the key and the value both have the same name. So let's save that and see if this works. I'm going to go to the browser and click on one and it removes it from the DOM. And then when we have none left, we get this message right here. You have no to do's left. Yay one. Shouldn't be yay one, <laughs> you should be yay. So let's just update that, save it, and try again. Woo, okay. So my friends, we're halfway there, probably slightly more than halfway there. We just now need to add a little form to add a new to-do. So it doesn't stop here. As my friend Raymond Michael would say, this is a ninja wagon. So jump on, and I'm gonna see you in the next video for the rest of this small application.